A liquor store may seem like a simple place from the outside, but in many places, it's actually a pivotal intersection for American life. And the nation's ever-present issues like immigration and race, dependence and self-reliance. It's an acute observation from a new documentary, a deeply personal and wide-ranging account seen through the lens of a first-time filmmaker. It's not. Oh, it's not. So Yoon Um had always dreamed of making movies. Why did you want to go into filmmaking? The corniest answer is how do I change the world in my own way, even for a little bit? But to me, I was like, oh, I came from an immigrant family. What does it mean to make a film? How do I even make a film? She spent two years at Cal State Long Beach learning the basics, eventually turning the camera towards what she knew best. I'm a liquor store baby. dreams. The result for the first time filmmaker is the documentary Liquor Store Dreams. It's the story of how her family's path to success in America, along with so many other Korean immigrants of their generation, came through owning a liquor store. My dad is the hardest working person I know. A demanding, sometimes dangerous business requiring 15 hours a day, seven days a week. So his father, Heisup Um, played along with help from subtitles. <laughs> but warned her on camera. <laughs> if you make a film about mundane subjects, people will say that was boring. It will flop. Scene SK take eight. Little did he know the film on his mom and pop liquor store was about so much more. We didn't understand the history of South LA when we came into the neighborhood. And I think with more context, you have a fuller understanding of, okay, who are our neighbors? What have they been through? And how can we prevent certain things from happening again? As so learned through films like Do the Right Thing. Want to see energizers? D, not C, D. And Menace to Society. Man, I always think we're gonna steal something. People like her family were often depicted as either angry and dangerous or farcical and disposable sideline characters. And it really showed me a different perspective of why we were being perceived like that. And of course, there was always some truth, some stereotypes, mm -hmm. but I think that for me, I was like, okay, well, how do I create more empathy? Or how do I also show my side and share our lived experience? By the late 1980s, Koreans owned 75% of all liquor stores in South Los Angeles. Then came the L.A. uprising, brought on by the Rodney King beating. But also, as so reminds viewers, the killing of 15-year-old Latasha Harlins by a Korean store owner. But even if Sun Jae-do's action didn't represent all Korean merchants, it still created shame in me. I grew up mm -hmm. in that community nail salons, liquor stores. I remember driving through those communities and seeing the tears pouring out of the grief over the loss. Mm. How hard was it for you? I feel like as somebody who grew up in Los Angeles my whole life, you carry that grief and the history within you. It was tough. Even though I didn't experience it, I feel like I knew exactly what those people went through. She began uh, shooting in 2019. Days. Then in the middle of filming came COVID-19, George Floyd's murder, and the Black Lives Matter movement, with protests bringing back harsh memories of 92, when six of her family's relatives lost their businesses. For me, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna have to pivot slightly, just a little bit, because we're now being personally affected by this. Within my own family, how do I discuss issues of anti-blackness? How do I discuss issues of what's happening in this country? Part of her answer included the story of Danny Park. What is this here? This is my, uh, my grandfather. Um, he owned a liquor store. Yeah. Park left his dream job in marketing at Nike to help his mom run their store on L.A. Skid Row after his father died. In the aftermath of Floyd's death, Park renamed his store the People's Market, setting forth to bridge the divides in his community. You're taking one very small corner 
But you're taking a stand. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I aspire to. For So Yoon Oom, bridging the divides in her own family was complicated. And it led to some dramatic conversations with her father. One so it said they could not have had off camera. Your dad did not shy away. It wasn't like turn the camera off. He was so dogged in getting his point across to you. I think I was definitely more scared in that conversation than he was. Wow. So this is it. Does it look different? Very different. Hey Sup Um sold his liquor store in 2021, a 1,200 square foot room that's so full of memories and meaning. In all of your life, would you have ever thought your daughter would tell your story uh. of life in the liquor store? Uh. No, never, never, never. Nor could he have imagined traveling to New York City last year. My dad's here. For the Tribeca Film Festival, where liquor store dreams had its world premiere. I think people always ask, how'd you get him to do the movie? And I'm like, because he thought nothing of it. <laughs> he thought it wasn't going to go anywhere, that it was just going to be like a school project. So, yeah. Now he's a movie star. Yeah. Now you're a movie star. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Of course, her father was poignant, but Danny Park, that liquor store owner on Skid Row, so much there. Can't wait for you to see it. It is free on PBS, also available on Apple.